game released in 2014. Magus. Is that how that's pronounced? I always thought it was Magus. Well, whatever. I'm still going to call the guy from Chrono Trigger that. And the nice thing is, I no longer have to associate this with Chrono Trigger. And, uh, you know, that's a good thing because, and this is a hot take, Chrono Trigger, pretty good. Pretty good game. Uh, this one, yeah, it ain't. Like, just flat out, it's bad. Okay, a little bit of preamble. Last week I did say that I was going to do a game that was donated to me on Steam, and uh, that's still in the works. Unfortunately, I've been having a little bit of technical issues playing old PC games through Steam on new computers. It's got some problems. However, this kind of fell into my lap, so we're gonna do this anyway. It's, it's an opportunity, kinda. Okay, but the short version is that this has been on my PS3 wanna play list for a very long time. First of all, because I just wanna play all games. And as an archivist, seeing Sony take down all of the PlayStation Store, even though I've got basically everything I want, that's sad. But their PS Now service was offering an introductory trial for a dollar, which meant that I could experience PS Now, see what that's all about, as well as try this game for basically no cost. Uh, short review of PS Now, uh, there's a half second delay between everything, which, while well, for the basic controls is fine, uh, camera controls really messed me over, and for every hour I played, the service crashed. And that was with a fairly stable internet connection, so that's not so good there, Sony. And streaming games is never really gonna replace actually, you know, having them, but that's, that's, again, hot take. My point is, I got to play this game for basically no cost, which is good, because I don't want to play this game or pay for it ever again. Now, Magus stars the titular guy, um, uh, Magus. We're, we're really soaring for realms of creativity and names, aren't we, guys? He's a prisoner with his trusty sidekick, I think her name was Meat Shield. You'll never guess what she does. And, uh, well, he's ascending godhood and he has to murder a whole bunch of people. If it sounds like I clocked out on the plot here, which is wildly unprofessional of me, especially in my position, um, I also did that after the first two seconds of gameplay, and trust me, at that point, you'd understand. Our character Magus is a one-dimensional trope of I need to murder everything, because I'm just that damn mad at everyone and everything. Also, he's an amnesiac. Sure. And, uh, well, yeah, you end up helping people and then murdering them. You end up running into people you want to murder, murdering them. You end up coming to sort of amicable understandings with people and still murdering them because this guy's just kind of like that. He's unlikable and there's no, like, self-discovery or any sort of arc whatsoever. He's the exact same character at the start as he is at the end, and there's really no plot development until literally the final scene of the game where they try and like hit you with like a complete like out of nowhere plot twist that just makes no sense and I couldn't care because I wasn't invested in any of these characters because they're just straight up unlikable for what little minuscule amount of character there is, and by that I mean like the one personality trait they were given. Um, yeah, plot-wise this game, it, it ain't good. But, on the bright side, it matches the gameplay. Now, like I said, I was going into this kind of expecting an RPG, and I was massively wrong. It's a third-person shooter, with a weirdly, like, medieval aesthetic. And, to be fair, I've seen a game do this before. It was called Hunted the Demon's Forge. Had Lucy Lawless, goddamn Xena, as... Well, basically Xena. It was awesome. You should go play that game. Okay, it wasn't great, but still, it was this, but significantly better. Go play Hunted the Demon's Forge. Actually, I think it is on PS now as well. Huh. Either way, nothing about this as a third-person shooter works. First and foremost, the shooting. Well, your character has three different colors of attacks. You've got the green apple Kool-Aid shot of rapid fire and doing basically very little. You have the blue raspberry kool-aid shot of three shots at once and doing basically nothing and the red strawberry kool-aid flavor of firing very slow shots that do also basically nothing but with the added benefit of using the stock imp 
fireball sound effect from Doom, because they put effort into this game. The only difference between shots, honestly, is their firing speed, so just go with the fastest thing, the green thing, and you'll be doing the most damage. They do have alternate firing techniques, but they're mostly worthless. The green one is sort of like a piercing laser that doesn't pierce, so... Well done. The green one is an explosive bomb, which actually I did find use out of. It does kind of like a massive amount of damage to one enemy, but it's sort of like a very slow arc and you have to get really close. Really only found that useful when fighting giants, and I mean, I could juggle them with my green apple shot, so, you know, it didn't matter all that much. And the red one just fires a stream of fire on the ground with some really crappy low-res skull effects. It ain't great. You know, the point for having different kinds of weapons is to give strategy, except that, well, first of all, you get all three pretty much from the start, and they're interchangeably weak. None of the enemies really react to them until they fall over, either. Honestly, these weapons feel about as ineffective as the ones from Halo when you have to deal with those stupid shields that just instantly recover all the enemy's health. The weapons in this game are completely ineffective and they are just so unsatisfying to use. There's, there's no tangible visceral feeling to hitting an enemy with these. It's just, I'm gonna attack, I'm gonna attack, I'm gonna attack, you're dead. Awesome. The AI in this game is also really really god-awful. Like, your AI partner Meat Shield, she just kind of runs off over the horizon, and then like 90% of the enemies chase after her, and you're just left standing there scratching your head as to why you're bothering. But, when the enemies do actually decide to come after you, they just sort of charge at you and occasionally attack, and that's kind of all they do. Take a few steps back and literally their entire effectiveness in combat is basically reduced to zero. Although, there is like the rare, like, three enemies that have crossbows that can almost sort of try to hit you at a distance, but they don't bother, they just target good old Meat Shield. Way to take one for the team there, Meat Shield. Also speaking of her, she really just likes to openly, while you're looking at her, disappear and then just randomly teleport around you because I guess they couldn't be asked to actually program a sensible AI that would stick with you. So she just teleports around because, you know, this game was well made. Also, enemies just pop out of nowhere. And I'm not just talking about the ones that show up in a teleporter in front of you that at least kind of have an excuse for it. I mean, sometimes they just pop out of thin air right in front of you, two steps away from you. It's ridiculously bad. Now, that said, we do have some extra skills. Weirdly enough, one of the skills is tied to beating one boss that you have one shot at one specific way, and if you screw up, it's gone forever. So that's, uh, an interesting choice. Not a fun or satisfying one, but either way. It has a leveling system similar to an RPG, and every time you level, you can put points into skills and pretty much all these skills are worthless. Except for one, there is a skill that speeds up your character which lets you go through the really, really massive empty levels real quick, so that's good. But the rest are pretty much worthless. In fact, some of them actually like break the game and not in a fun way. I, I actually don't have footage of this because I literally did this just as I was finishing up with my time with this game, but you have this ability to turn yourself into like this giant and a lot of areas in this game just aren't accommodated to have a character that's about four times their size. And so you actually get like physically stuck in the environment. And uh, interestingly, when it wore off, the game kind of popped me out of the walls and I just had to restart but I decided not to because I gave up because this game is bad and I had done everything else I needed to in this game. It ain't fun. This game almost feels like it's trying to be sort of like a Gauntlet or Diablo style game where it tries to flood the room with enemies at all times, except that the game itself clearly cannot handle it, so they really have to cheap out on the number of enemies they actually send your way. It's uh, not good, but what's worse in a Diablo style game is the sense of loot, you know? If, if you get good loot and you're constantly upgrading and changing your character's style, that can at least be fun where everything else fails. Here it fails horribly. So enemies drop loot when you kill them, albeit very rarely, which is already incredibly unsatisfying, but the loot itself seems pretty random. It seems to be sort of scaled to your level, like when you're level 1 you'll be getting like level 1 items, but when you're level 50 you'll be getting level 50 items, and level 1 through 49 as well. 
because when I was running through the final level in like the final boss room where the boss was summoning all these enemies who were basically the hardest thing in the game, I was still getting level one armors or, or red armor, which is sort of like the equivalent. I, I was getting literally my first instance of armor in the final room of the game. That's not good. Tie that with the fact that drops are pretty scarce in this game and you have a really unsatisfying experience. It should also be noted that equipment stats are just wildly unsatisfying. You know, like, what what sort of levels would you expect by end game tier items? Like, you know, plus 50, 100, 200, 500 attack? Yeah, the highest stats I ever saw tied to any singular piece of equipment in this game? 6. Plus 6. And that was the best piece of armor I found in this game at level 50 on the final stage. In this game's defense, it does have a kind of neat system where you can take all your junk extra items, which are literally all the items because the equipment's, like I said, kind of really awful. And you can take those stats and then put them into permanent stat boost for your character. That's cool, but... The actual equipment itself is so unsatisfying and bad, and while you can sort of coalesce all their stats into these permanent boosts for your character, because each piece of equipment is so low, you really need to farm if you want to actually see some sort of tangible improvement. And because of that, there's basically zero sense of progression in this game. You're not getting your character stronger, you're certainly not getting better as a player, because, I mean, the concept of fighting in this game is literally hold down the attack button, oh look, everything's dead. You know, there's there's just nothing satisfying about actually playing this. Honestly, gameplay-wise, there's not really anything to recommend about this. As a shooter, it is wildly unsatisfying to play as. As an RPG, well, literally all the RPG elements either are completely glossed over and basically have zero impact on the game, or just straight up aren't fun to deal with. Like, yeah, okay, my health is more abundant. Hooray. Though to be fair, I never really felt like I was in any danger at any point. This game is relatively simple, and from what I can tell, setting it on harder difficulties really just increases how hard enemies hit, so it's not like it would actually increase strategy. And indeed, there's not really strategy in this game because the enemies just sort of mindlessly run at you until they're all gunned down. As long as you can keep your distance from them, you're golden, and that's literally the only strategy you ever need to employ in this game. I mean, honestly, you know all those skills I was talking about and how most of them were useless except for the speed-up function? Yeah, my first time playing through this, of the three I did for this recording session, yeah, the first time I played through, I didn't use any abilities. Didn't need to. Seriously, my green apple power shot of complete wimpiness was enough to take care of literally every single problem that came my way, which is, uh, not great. Also, if you're the kind of person who enjoys a longer game to get the most out of your money, this game will probably disappoint you. You can get through the game itself in probably about two hours, and that's mostly because the environments themselves are really large, and some of them are a little confusing, though you do get a map, but there's only six if you include the tutorial area, but really, most of the levels are just designed to take as long as possible because they're just stretched out with nothing to really do in it. You'll have periods where you just run for what seem like minutes between combat encounters, so if you want to go back to my analogy of it sort of being like Diablo or Gauntlet, it fails just from the fact that it has very little action at any one point, and when it does, you know, take a couple steps back, fire some green apple shots into the crowd, and uh, there you go. Problem solved. And as you run around these really sort of bland, singular element environments without much to look at, you'll be fighting a grand total of two enemy types per level, and uh, one of them's always a stock humanoid. So really, one unique enemy type per level. Have fun. And there's only five levels, so, you know, you're gonna see everything pretty quick, no matter how long they're gonna be. This game is, uh, not remotely interesting, and really hits that one note, and does it pretty much instantaneously. So, once you've played the first two seconds of this game, well, have fun with the next very bland, like, two hours of it, because it's not gonna change all that much. The overall presentation of Magus is... Not great. I'm really hoping this was an early PS3 game. In fact, I'm gonna take a look at that right now. This was released in 20 goddamn 14? What? Okay, this game looks like a really 
bad PS2 game. And I'm not a graphics guy by any means, but this game should not look this bad. In fact, going back to the gameplay, it should not run this bad because you've had almost a decade of time with this console at this point to figure out how to run things well. What the hell happened with this piece of crap? Visually, it is not very interesting. There's one or two areas that look kind of nice. The sort of lagoon area looks kind of nice, but everything's very low poly, and honestly, it's not that interesting looking. It's It feels very low color, low interest. There's not really all that much to take a look at that really demands your attention. Honestly, the best looking area is the first area in the game because that at least had two environments. You had the very bland dungeon, and then you had the kind of nicer but still equally bland forest area. The character models look not very good, and while the equipment does change your actual character model appearance, your character still looks awful, and Magus wants to be a Deathclaw when he grows up. He has this really poncy walk that just makes him look like he's trying to go, Rawr, I'm a big scary, but he's not a big scary. He's not. Audio-wise, the music is pretty much entirely forgettable, although I will credit the voice acting. That was actually kind of decent. It's a shame the story it was trying to act out was, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, yeah, abhorrent. But, you know, at the very, very least, voice acting was good. You know, it, it was the one good thing. Good for you, voice acting. Now, if you want a copy of Magus on the PS3, cheapest copy I'm seeing right now, and I'm betting this is because people are cranking up the price on all the PS3 games at this point, $102! <laughs> And whoever buys it at that price, I pity, because I got to play this game for basically free and I want my money back. This game is abhorrent in pretty much every single way. I genuinely have no idea why someone would pay that much for this game. I genuinely have no idea why anyone would want to play this game. I wanted to play this game and I'm struggling to think of why. Oh yeah, because I want to archive and play everything. You know, sometimes I take a bullet for you people. You're welcome. But Mages is not worth it. You know, going back to my whole analogy of how Hunted the Demon's Forge was basically this, but better, and it was made a lot sooner. How was this game released in 2014? What? Screw off, Mages. You are not worth $102. You are not worth the dollar I paid to stream this. This game is awful. I'm not going to say it's the worst thing on the PS3. That would be certainly very hyperbolic given some of the, you know, indie games out there that existed to make a quick buck and were quickly removed for the most part. But, you know, this game is absolutely not worth it. $102! Screw off, Magus! Ah! Time to die! Ah! Come on! Kill them all! <laughs> <laughs>